Hi everybody, welcome to my review of Season 3, Episode 16 of Little Women Atlanta. If you haven't seen this episode yet, this video will act like a spoiler, so you might want to watch this video later. The name of this episode is Stage Fight. The episode begins with Juicy, Money, and Sam going wine tasting. Juicy asks the ladies how they liked the escape room. Money says that it was fun and she was glad that they could all get out. She also says it was great how everybody was getting along. Juicy says that she doesn't know if they all got along. In the commentary, Juicy says that Minnie put together the escape room meetup for the ladies because she wanted to talk and settle the differences between them. Juicy says that she plays nice with the ladies all together, but Minnie has to accept that they're never going to be best friends. Juicy tells Sam and Money that Minnie told her that she wanted to move on, but she herself had already moved on. She's not going to put herself in a situation where the same stuff keeps happening over and over. Sam says that there are so many times you can do something to someone without them getting mad eventually. Then, Juicy asks Money how Moreland is doing. Money says that Moreland is good and he has just been working, and she gets lonely when he's not home, and she kind of gets bored too. Juicy says that she has something to help with Money's boredom. She says that the man who got her started in acting holds acting workshops, and Money and Sam should look into it. Sam says that they should all do it because it'll be fun. And then, Money asks Juicy if Minnie is invited. Juicy says she didn't say all of the girls were going. Sam asks Juicy if she thinks that Minnie will feel left out. In the next scene, Sam and Tanya chat with each other. Sam asks Tanya if she has talked to Devon lately. Tanya says yes, and he's coming to Atlanta soon, and he'll be moving in with her. She said while she's pregnant, he's going to be there to help her. Sam says that Devon is a good man, and she likes that he's willing to help. In the commentary, Tanya says that she's thankful that she can still rely on Devon for help because she's tired of trying to get Nico to help with her needs when he clearly doesn't. Tanya tells Sam that the difference between Nico and Devon when it comes to fathering is that Nico feels his only way of being a good father is him following his dreams. Tanya says she told Nico that she needs him to be consistent in Jaden's life and he's catching on to the fact that he doesn't see him all the time. Sam says that in the future, Nico's decisions are going to make his kids despise him because he chose making music over them. Tanya says that Nico never made Jaden a priority ever and he still isn't. She says Nico agreed to go to appointments, but she can't count on him. Then, Tanya tells Sam that both of her kids have an appointment to find out what kind of dwarfism they have and if her daughter Luna even has dwarfism. Tanya says Nico knows what a big deal that appointment is for her because she hates the idea of her kids having to go through the same things that she went through growing up as a little person. Tanya says that Nico knew about the appointment, but he didn't ask her if she needed any help. Then, Tanya asks Sam if she wants to go to the appointment with her. Sam says she would love to go. Next, Money visits the twins at their apartment complex. She tells the twins that Juicy invited them to an acting workshop directed by Shelly Garrett, the man who got Juicy into acting, and she feels like it would be good for them to go because they all have trouble speaking in front of crowds. And Andrea asks Money who will be going to the workshop. Money says that they'll be there and Sam and Juicy will be there. Andrea asks if Minnie is going. Money says that Juicy didn't invite Minnie because they're still not getting along, and she doesn't want anything to go wrong at the workshop in front of Mr. Garrett. Andrea says she thinks she'll pass on that opportunity because Minnie is invited, and she's not going to leave her out. She tells Amanda that she feels like she's betraying Minnie because she's going to the workshop. Amanda asks how is she betraying Minnie, and she says that they have to do their own things. Money says that there's no shade against Minnie. Andrea says that there is shade involved. She says that she is still not going and she doesn't think that Amanda should go either because Minnie is their girl and she's always been there for them. Andrea says that shouldn't stop them from bettering themselves. She thinks it's a good opportunity for both of them and it's going to help them build their brand and learn how to speak in front of people and she asks Andrea if she wants to get better at that stuff. Andrea says that she's team Minnie all the way and she gets up and leaves the room and she tells Amanda that she can do whatever she wants. Amanda tells Andrea that she needs to not be a follower. Andrea says that she's not going to leave Minnie out of anything. Juicy, Sam, 
Amanda, and Money go to the acting workshop. Juicy says that Shelly Garrett is the godfather of production and stage play. The workshop begins, and Mr. Garrett has everyone introduce themselves and say if they have done any acting in the past. Then, they do some acting exercises, such as having two people at a time act out scenes, and while they're doing that, he gives them some pointers, such as telling them not to keep the paper in front of their face when they're talking. After the class is over, Mr. Garrett tells everybody that they did well, and the ladies had a good time in the class. In the next scene, Minnie and Andrea go belly dancing. After the class is over, they sit down. Minnie asks Andrea what's going on. Andrea says that she and her sister aren't talking at the moment, and it's because of Minnie. She said that everyone except Minnie was invited to an acting workshop, and Amanda decided to go. She says that she got mad, and her and her sister got into an argument. Minnie asks Andrea if Amanda is on Juicy's side. Andrea says that she doesn't know. In the commentary, Minnie says it hurts her that Amanda went to the workshop, knowing Juicy purposely invited everyone but her. Minnie says that it's disappointing, and she never thought that Amanda would take Juicy's side. Amanda is not taking any sides with anybody. It's not all about you, Minnie. I know you want it to be, but it's not. Amanda's just trying to better herself and, you know, help with her brand and stuff. And she did not want to pass up that opportunity. Being able to go to an acting workshop with a professional director, I wouldn't pass anything up like that. So, girl, it's not all about you. And Juicy invited her, so Juicy expects her to go. So it would be kind of rude for her not to go. So that's just typical Minnie. She thinks it's all about her. It's not like Amanda told Juicy not to invite her. Juicy has her reasons, and Amanda is just respecting that. Tanya takes her kids to their appointment. Sam comes along. Tanya says that the kids had their x-rays, and they're going to see the doctor again so that they can go over them. Doctor will know by their bone structure if they have dwarfism. Tanya says that she knows Jaden has dwarfism because of his legs, but she's not sure about her daughter Luna. They all go into the exam room and they meet with the doctor, Dr. Wilcox. Dr. Wilcox pulls up Jaden's x-rays. He points out how the ends of Jaden's ribs are cupped and they're not supposed to be like that. Tanya tries to hold back her tears. Dr. Wilcox points out how Jaden's hip point is a little irregular, and that's why he waddles when he walks. Then Tanya begins to cry. The doctor says that Jaden will need surgery soon. Then the doctor pulls up Luna's x-rays. The doctor tells Tanya that Luna is a little person too. Then Tanya cries some more and she collapses to the floor, crying. The doctor and Sam try to comfort Tanya. Tanya tells Luna that she didn't think she was small and she's so sorry. Tanya says that her kids are going to have problems and are going to be in pain for the rest of their lives. Tanya excuses herself. Then, Sam, Tanya, and her kids sit outside of the doctor's office building. Tanya says, since she found out that both of her kids have dwarfism, she feels like she has to be in fight mode double time because she will hurt somebody if they hurt her child. In the commentary, Tanya said she feels overwhelmed thinking about all the things she went through as a child because she's a little person. Just thinking of the things that she went through is extremely hard to handle. Tanya tells Sam that when she found out that her son Jaden was a little person and he wasn't Devon's baby, he was very mean to her. She says Devon told her that's what she gets for cheating. And, have, and she says that having a little person is her punishment. Tanya says that that plays in her mind. And it reminds her of all the bad things that she's been through. And now she's being punished by her kids being punished. Sam tells Tanya that she doesn't feel like her kids are being punished. And God made them the way they are for a reason. And they're really lucky to have a mother like Tanya. Sam says that since Tanya is also a little person, she can help her kids in ways that Tanya's parents couldn't. Jaden and Luna are going to get so much love that being little won't matter. Tanya says she feels like all she can have is little people babies. She mentions how, when she was growing up, she didn't have any other little people around her, and she felt like no one was like her. Sam says they have to stay positive for the kids, and everything is going to be okay. This was the saddest scene in the episode. Just watching Tanya collapsing and crying because she found out that her kids are going to have dwarfism. She's just scared about them getting teased and stuff and having health problems. 
but Sam is right. Tanya is going to help them because she's a little person, you know. She got into selling herbs and stuff and natural healing stuff, you know. Remember that episode where she had the tea tasting? She made different types of teas that do certain things for the body that helps with, that help with joint pain or like intestines and stuff. Like problems that little people have. So she's going to really help them out. And before they start school, she's going to have to, you know, help build their confidence. Like teach them how to um have thick skin, you know. Because people are harsh. Kids are harsh. They're going to tease them and bully them and stuff. I really hope they don't get bullied. From from an early age, Tanya is going to have to teach those kids how to stand up for themselves, what to do if they're getting bullied. Yeah, just basically build their confidence. Just watch. They're going to grow up and they're going to be members of society. They're going to be contributing to society. They could be a business owner like her. They could do whatever they want in life, you know. They should not let being a little person stop them. In the next scene, Money, Juicy, Amanda, and Sam meet up. Sam tells the ladies that she went with Tanya to her kid's appointment, and they found out that both of her kids have dwarfism. Then, Juicy tells the ladies that they have been picked to be in a play that Shelley Garrett is directing. Amanda says that she can't be in the play because her sister is mad at her since Minnie wasn't invited to the restaurant. Juicy says that Minnie isn't going to be invited to everything. Amanda says that Andrea feels like she's on Juicy's side. Juicy says that it's not about being on anybody's side and it's about bettering herself. But she respects her decision. Juicy tells Money and Sam that the play that they're going to be in is a live production. Sam says she hasn't been on a stage since high school and she messed up the last time she was on stage. And that will always be with her. Juicy tells them that they need to buckle down. And if they don't buckle down, it's going to make her look bad. In the next scene, Tanya is shown at her house with her kids. Her ex, Devon, arrives. Devon and Tanya sit down to talk. Tanya tells Devon that her kids just had a doctor's appointment and they found out that Luna is a little person too. Devon is speechless. Devon says that he knew that there was going to be a possibility of his daughter being a little person. The news of Luna being a little person hit her harder because she's experienced being a female little person and dealing with men and even girls bullying her and not wanting to be her friend because she's small. Tanya says she doesn't want her kids' feelings getting hurt because she'll have to fight people. And she hopes that her kids don't have to go through what she did growing up. And if they do, they'll have her as a mother and she'll help them get through it. Tanya tells Devon that she appreciates him coming out to Atlanta. And with him being there helping with the kids, it's going to take a lot off of her. Next, Sam, Juicy, and Money get together to go over their lines for the play. The twins and Aubrey watch them rehearse. Money starts to read her line. Juicy gives her some pointers, such as telling her to stand up straight and to get into character when reading her lines. In the commentary, Money says that she was kind of joking around and trying to lighten the mood while they were practicing. Then Money reads her line again and adds unnecessary body movements. Money tells Juicy to lighten up a little bit. Juicy tells Money that she needs to take things seriously, and they are all lucky that they got that opportunity. And she says she's been working with Shelly for many years, and Money is just taking things as a joke. Money says she appreciates the opportunity, but she's trying to lighten up the situation. Juicy says that they don't have time for lightening up the situation, and that moment is the only time that she had to go over the lines with them together. In the commentary, Money says she didn't mean to offend Juicy, and she doesn't want her to think she doesn't care about the play, because she does. Then Miss Juicy gets mad and begins to yell. She says that it's not a joke, and what she's doing cannot go on while she's in front of Mr. Garrett. Money tells Juicy that she needs to calm down. Then Juicy just says forget it and that Money plays too much and storms out of the room. Come on now Money, you better listen to Miss Juicy. Miss Juicy is not playing. Would you be acting up and adding the unnecessary movements and stuff on the day of the play? No. So, like Juicy said, that is a special opportunity that they got. Thanks to her. Better step it up. Next, Minnie goes to Andrea's apartment complex. She had Amanda tell Andrea to come over, but she has no idea that she's there to talk to her. Minnie tells Amanda that she wants to know why she went to the acting workshop. She says that she feels as a friend, Amanda should feel some type of way and not want to go because Minnie wasn't invited. Andrea says that Minnie has been there for them since day one, and then Amanda says they've been there for her too since day one. Minnie says that she's not saying that the twins haven't been there for her, but the fact is, they know how Juicy is and what Juicy has done. In the commentary, 
Amanda says she went to the workshop to work on her speech and help the girls with their lines, and she doesn't see anything wrong with that. Amanda said she wanted to go to the workshop because she felt like it was a good opportunity to help better herself. Minnie says Andrea could sign up for classes like that on her own. Andrea said she didn't go to the workshop because she didn't want Minnie to feel left out. Amanda says that she's not going to hold back because her sister didn't want to go. She says that Mr. Garrett wanted her to be in the play with the girls, but she said no, and she doesn't want it to affect her and her sister's relationship. Minnie said she felt like Amanda was turning against her, and once Juicy gets a hold of her, she'll say all kinds of bad things about her, and before you know it, Amanda stops messing with Minnie. Amanda says Juicy wasn't talking about Minnie at the workshop. Mm -hmm. See Minnie, it's not all about you, girl. See? In the commentary, Minnie says after talking to Amanda, she forgives her, and she understands that she was only trying to better herself and further her career. Amanda tells Minnie that she's sorry that she offended her. Then, Amanda tells Minnie that Sam and Money are still in the play, and they should all go and support Sam and Money. Minnie agrees, and she's going to invite her mother, so she can see Juicy fall flat on her face. It is the night of the play. Sam, Money, and Juicy arrive to the place where the play will be taking place. Backstage, they practice their lines, and Sam gets nervous, and she begins to cry. She says that she was having flashbacks back when she was in junior high school when she messed up in her school play. She was the lead role and she messed up in front of her whole family. And she says she has bad anxiety. Sam says that she does not want to look stupid. Juicy reassures her and tells her that she's not going to look stupid. Juicy tells Sam to not let the mistake that she made before cripple her. The play begins and Miss Juicy thanks the crowd for coming, etc. Then Miss Juicy and Money say their lines on stage. Sam is waiting backstage in costume, and you can tell by her eyes that she is not okay. It's Sam's turn to get on stage with the other actors. The curtain lifts, and then Sam says her lines. She does well, but she messes up a little. But she improvises and ends up okay. The play ends and the whole cast stands on stage and they get a standing ovation. Then all the ladies go backstage. Money tells Juicy that even Minnie's mom came to play. Juicy says that she's glad Minnie came and she's glad all the other ladies came. But when it comes to Minnie's mom, she could care less. The rest of the ladies go backstage and congratulate Sam, Juicy, and Money for doing a good job. Money says that she's glad that Juicy went hard on her. It made her work twice as hard to get into character and it paid off. Sam thanks the ladies for all of their support. And that's the end of the episode. Well, good for Money for buckling down. Yes, Money. Hopefully she learned something from this experience. I'm happy that Sam didn't freeze up on stage. You know, when she messed up a little. She just improvised and, and just went with the flow. So good for her. Minnie's kind of immature. And with this whole situation with Minnie not being invited to the workshop and being mad, it's just all immature, you know. Yes, I know Minnie would naturally... Be, be up be disappointed because she wasn't invited to the workshop but why would you think somebody else is taking sides for going to the workshop that they were invited to just because you weren't invited it's not all about you now with this next thing I'm about to talk about I don't mean to be rude or anything or mean but I'm just stating facts and they might not sound so nice coming out of my mouth so sorry if I offended anybody about Tanya and finding out that her kids had dwarfism. She should have known that there was a 50-50 chance of her having a kid with dwarfism. And she just keeps on having all these kids talking about she's not using birth control because she doesn't like chemicals in her body. But she's having all these kids that she can't even handle, you know. Thank goodness she has Devon as her other baby daddy because if Nico was the father of all her kids, She'd be a single mother. And thank goodness she's on the show. Thank goodness she's on Little Women Atlanta because she has a group of friends who will be happy to help out with her kids. Well, maybe her mother would have helped out with the kids, you know? Um, I heard her mother is a good mother to her and a good grandmother, so she probably would have came through and helped out. Thank goodness for Devon. Devon is a real man. Takes care of his kid. And kids that aren't even his. I don't really have any more extra thoughts on this episode so i'm just gonna wrap this video up thank you guys so much for watching this video hope you enjoyed it 
Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Follow me on Twitter at ILU More Than This. Subscribe to my channel. If you have subscribed, turn on my notifications. Feel free to check out my other videos on my channel. I also make Little Women Dallas review videos. I have a playlist full of Little Women Atlanta review videos. I'll, I'll put it somewhere up on the end screen right now. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!